This research is actually looking at a very important patient population. This is people that have had sudden cardiac death and been resuscitated, like by a paramedic and brought to hospital, or patients that have come to hospital with a serious life-threatening heart rhythm, such as ventricular tachycardia. Now, in that situation, obviously, we're very concerned that there may be a recurrence of that. And so we want to try to identify what the cause of this heart rhythm was. What we did was we used cardiac MRI in each of these patients that presented and tried to identify what might be at the root of that heart rhythm. So this is a typical cardiac MRI. Here we've got what we call a cine or moving image of the heart. And you can see it's like we've just taken the chest wall off. And here we see the main pumping chamber, the left ventricle. And there's an area of the heart here that's not squeezing quite as well as it should. What we found was that about 75% of patients that had an MRI performed, we were able to identify a plausible reason why that heart rhythm occurred. When we looked at the conventional testing with just either an ultrasound or angiogram or whatever was clinically ordered by the physician, then indeed it was only about half of patients that we found a cause. So this made a very big and incremental difference to our diagnosis in these patients. We found that about 50% of the time, we actually provided either a new or alternate diagnosis in this patient population. The diseases that we typically identified by MRI were actually either an acute inflammation of the heart from a virus, for example, or small heart attacks that weren't documented or weren't picked up clinically. And so now that we know that these patients can have serious life-threatening heart rhythms and we have the ability to detect them, we may actually change what we do with those patients. So the next step of this research is actually to look at how doing an MRI change our, changes our therapeutic decision making. So how does an MRI actually change what we do as physicians? And does that ultimately lead to a change in how well patients do?